from last week, the Tom Wilson thing. I know we talked about it a lot last week and, you know, him not getting suspended. This is just a hypothetical, but with the, with the NHL signing that new television contract with ESPN and TNT, do you think it's possible that they may have said to the NHL, hey, we like the rough stuff. We like the intensity. We miss that. Right now, it's too much of shinny. We don't want that. We want the intensity. And the NHL hears that and says, okay, Tom Wilson's going back into MSG in two days. Maybe we don't suspend them to create a storyline two days later, later to, to get the buzz going. Like, that game was one of the most watched, if not the most watched game of the year. And it was talked about on, on SportsCenter in the States. It was like front page news. So m- do you think it's possible that the NHL didn't suspend him on purpose? Is this like a new thing that we're, we're seeing here? And are stories, are they going to try to build upon these stories more often when they come up? I, I don't think so. But I love that aspect. Like, I think the MLB and the NHL are the two worst sports at A, marketing stars, and B, creating storylines. Like, they're awful at it. Like, I'm going to talk in my last minute about Aaron Rodgers. This guy is a natural storyline. This is why the N- NFL and the NBA stay relevant in the offseason when they're not playing, is that these are the kind of things that people want to see. What are the most watched shows of the last, like, 10 years? Reality shows, because they create drama, whether it's uh, inorganic or not. That's But, like, Keeping Up with the Kardashians is, like, one of the highest rated shows of the last, like, 20 years. We love drama. We, we love it. And for some reason, I'm going to get killed for this. But Tom Wilson is, like, one of the greatest storylines in hockey. Is he a little bit dangerous? Yeah. But... He's great for the game. I hate to say it. I'm going to get killed. I'm going to get hammered. I'm probably going to get canceled from a show that doesn't make any money. But he's great. He's a storyline. We have the ultimate villain now. And for some reason, NHL fans hate this. They want to get him out of the game. This is great for the game. There are three NHL players that get talked about on PTI. Alex Ovechkin, Sidney Crosby, Tom Wilson. That's the list. That's it. Like, this is national news in the States. This is how you grow your game. Forget the most watched game of this year, Joe. I think that was the most watched. That was more watched than the, the NHL finals, than, the, than the, the Tampa Bay. Who, I don't even know who they played. Tampa Bay, whoever played. Whoever Dallas. played Tampa. That would be Dallas. Dallas still has a hockey. And it doesn't, like, it, that had to have been, I messaged a guy. I, go, I, I sent him a clip of the, of the brawl. He goes, he texts me back. He goes, are you kidding me? I'm watching this. I'm watching this. This guy's not even a, a Rangers fan. It was great for the game. And I don't know why they don't want it. The NFL and NBA, they embrace it. Now all we need is that hero to come along and take out Tom Wilson. Like, we need these villains in sports. Like, one of the most watched teams over the last 20 years was the 2013 Miami Heat. Because everybody hated them. We all turned in to see them lose. And yet the NHL wants to snuff it out. And it just, it drives me nuts. It's a fair point. Like, it's funny, you mentioned the NHL and MLB. If I'm baseball, this never would have happened. But if if I'm baseball with my wrestling background, I would have had the Houston Astros coming out and giving fans you know, one of, <laughs> Jeff Hughes and the, wearing a mask with a cape and coming out to like bad music, just like like the wrestling entrance. Give everybody like a wrestling entrance, like the heel of the MLB. You know what I mean? And then have them go to each town. You know, just mm-hmm. act like those bad guys, like they did in wrestling, because it. What were we all talking about? How bad the Houston Astros were because of the cheating thing. I would have took full advantage of it. But you're right, Rob. MLB, Rob Manfred, he dropped the ball worse than Rob Ford has done in Ontario. Okay? That guy had no clue what he was doing and how to handle that situation. But it was a story. It was a story that everybody gravitated to. Oh, players were coming out on record saying that they wanted to kick the shit out of the, <laughs> the Astros players when they saw them. It was amazing. And it just kind of fizzled. Like, we remember it, but it fizzled. But I think you're right. I think the NFL and NBA would have turned that into a, a Thursday night 805 game on TNT. You know? And they would have, like, advertised the hell out of it. So I, 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 I'll go with you on this one for sure. You raised some fair points there, Bobby. I hate, I hate to say it. I hate agreeing with you. But you, you're right in that it, 
it draws the ire. It, draw, it draws eyeballs. Even people that hate it, it makes them pay attention more. So it might be a fair strategy. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, though, in the next coming, like the upcoming um, instances like this, how they choose to handle it and h- how they choose to market guys like a Tom Wilson, perhaps, or other stars around the league. But why, let me ask you guys something. Why do you think fans want to snuff this guy out? I don't, I, don't, I don't understand. Like, I look at the MLB, and I think we have one of the greatest players of the last 80 years, and Mike Trout, just dying in L.A. Dying! This career is... He's, I think he's like 28 already. The guy's career has slid by. I think he's been in one playoff series. And I don't even know if he's even been to the playoffs. And I have stats that say he's an all-time player. And they just don't want to market them. Like, Frank, you talked about, I believe, ESPN not putting Connor McDavid. Like, the guy's not getting primetime games. The guy should be everywhere. He's about to do something. He's about to put up video game numbers. We don't see about him. We, or see him. We don't hear him. We, we do have, in Canada. We do in Canada. Yeah. He's all over. But you're right. Yeah. It, if, if Connor McDavid walked down the street in most American cities, no one would recognize him or know who the hell he is. Joe, you say that we do. Frank brought up a good point when, during the, the quarantine when we were just throwing out games and, and it didn't matter what times. They had Connor McDavid playing at 11 a.m. Yeah. Like, they weren't even playing on Hockey Day in Canada. We have one of the best Canadian hockey players. Maybe, like, he's yeah, Gretzky esque with these numbers. But, Ever, but yeah. These, but but, but let's, let's keep that, let's put this into perspective. Uh, Sportsnet didn't have just the rights uh, for those games. They had to sp- they had to do that with M- uh, NBC as well. So if NBC is telling the league, "Hey, listen, we want Boston and whoever they were playing at night," that's just going to filter everything up. You know, we want Edmonton and you know uh, Chicago. They're playing at- Chicago. Oh, Chicago, Chicago at eleven o'clock. That's right? a big so market. That's a good team. That I don't know. I think that's more it has to do with NBC than Sportsnet because they would have them in prime time. But I think- yeah, it's fair to for- fair point. I think MLB thinks the same way. I haven't, I haven't watched Mike Trout play in six years because he, he's just dying. And, and the fans hate it. Like, we have, we have these polarizing players like Fernando Tatis, and everyone's like, you got to act a certain way. Yeah. Why? Why? He's bringing in eyeballs. Uh, Ronald Acuna hit, like, six opening uh, leadoff home runs. The next game, he gets plunked by a guy in Florida. Like, first pitch, hardest pitch he throw. And it's like, you're killing – the players are killing the game. The fans are killing the game. Embrace these storylines. These are great. I'm going to talk about Aaron Rodgers in our in our last minute. The NFL, the NBA have these great storylines. The NHL has to get on board with this. And people have to stop saying, Tom, you don't like Tom Wilson? That's fine. You're going to watch, though, because you hate the guy. And we Or need you're going to want to watch someone go after him, right? Like, if That's it's me. Thing. You, you, people love the villain because they, they love seeing the villain go down. So. Go down. Exactly. The, 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 fini- the final, like uh, Thanos at the end, he... The Avengers eventually get him in the end. So don't we want like Vegas versus Washington, another rematch where we can see Ryan Reeves absolutely fill Tommy Wilson again? Isn't that great for the game? No, not for NHL fans. It's unheard of. We got to act in a certain way. And it's just, it's ridiculous. And you know what? I think we, what we need more of is honesty because, you know, when we see all these fines and stuff coming, when, when, when players are honest and it's like, you know, it gives them a slap on the wrist. We can't create villains. You know, it, it, it just, just there's pol- there's too many polarizing figures. You know, I, I just this is hot off the press. I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, uh, but the Columbus Blue Jacket uh, end of year pressers, you know, just like they did with Eichel every year, you, you do your your rounds. It's the same stuff. Well, you know, we didn't get it done this year. We didn't reach our goals. How about this for honesty? Patrick Liney says, this is quote: "You won't see me at the Worlds because of this because of the season. I can't even stand the game of hockey right now." It was an absolute miserable experience team-wise and personally. Only good things that the season's over. Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. That's Patrick Liney talking about Columbus. I love it. The honesty. Right? I love it. Right? This and that will be... create a storyline because people are going to talk about that now. And, but you know what would have been better? If, if Tortorella wasn't gone, because I know you know there was a mutual party. I would love to hear what he had to say about this. <laughs> That's a storyline, man. This is This is perfect. You know, this is the stuff we're talking about, you know. That's the stuff they got to push, but they're not going to. They find the ra- the Rangers took the biggest punishment of the Tom Wilson thing by, by saying the league screwed up, which they did. But, but that like, created a storyline, too. Hey, 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 but they got a $500,000 fine. It's 250, just like 250. Was it two, oh, sorry. <laughs> only only 245000 more than Tommy did for dropping a guy, you know, almost on his head. But yeah. 
embrace this stuff. This is great. This is great. All right. Let me let's end this off with one quick storyline that may happen in the NHL. Just give me quick odds, okay, or quick timeline. How long does it take? Because it it looks like well, not it looks like it is going to happen. The Washington Capitals are going to square off against the Boston Bruins in the first round. How long does it take Jack Edwards to start complaining about how much Zdeno Chara is allowed to get away with in the playoffs? And starts whining and complaining about it. How long do you think it takes him? Warm up. <laughs> I, and for I those think- of you who don't know, Jack Edwards is, is, of course, the Bruins play-by-play announcer who is very... Um, he, He's a bit of a homer. A bit of a little, just a little little bit bit. of a homer. Let's put it this way: the cheap shot, so-called cheap shot that Komarov gave Pasternak. I think Edwards took it worse than Pasternak. So (laughs) I think so. He felt it. I I can't wait. He's gonna just destroy Tom Wilson. Destroy him. Even all the fighters that Boston had, all these doesn't matter. Those guys are forgotten. But Tom Wilson, he's a he's a goon. He's disgusting. Bad. They don't even really have. Do they have yeah, any fighters? Yeah, they got left? one guy. They got a guy who's trying to make a name for himself, Trent Frederick. And I think okay. they went at it this year too. And I think Wilson like, ate him for lunch or something like that. But, but you know, I think Rob, you and I were talking about this too. It's like, think about this now. You can talk about Wilson, but if you thought he was free to do whatever he wanted before, especially now in a playoff series, can you imagine now he's got backup <laughs> in Chara? Who's gonna Who's gonna stop him? That, that's why it was a huge signing. But that's yeah. why the only team that I think is going to be able to push back is Vegas. Because, A, they've got the side. Washington is huge. Washington's yeah. a big And they added Anthony team. Manta. He's like 6'5". Huge. But Vegas has the ultimate nuclear weapon sitting on their bench. And he's the one guy that might be able to neutralize those two. Well, it's going to be interesting. We'll I, talk I, about I, uh, yeah. NHL one day. About, Stay well, tuned. Not here. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why Washington is not going to win the Stanley Cup. But... Um, yeah, we'll talk about that uh, in our next uh, segment or pod. Well, we're we're kind of running out of time, so why don't we get to our 